Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna go through some cranial nerve tests. So remember, there are 12 pairs of nerves that exit your brain and brain stem, and some of them are sensory, so they bring information to the brain and brain stem. Some of them are motor, they send signals out and away from the brain and brain stem, and they control what has to do with the head and neck. And one in particular descends down beyond the head and neck and can control things that are happening at the heart, the airways, and the digestive system. So let's talk about these particular nerves and how we can test them. So first thing is 12 pairs coming out either side. These 12 pairs from one to 12, as we can see here, are the olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, facial, vestibular cochlea, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. An easy way to remember it is OOO, to touch and feel very good, velvet are heaven. Now, like I said, some of these are sensory, some of these are motor, some of these are both. How can we remember the difference? You can say, some say marry mummy, but my brother says big brains matter most. So the S in some say sense, sensory, motor, motor, both, motor, both, sensory, both, both, motor, motor. Now that you've got this, we can go through what they do and how we can test them. So if we start with the first one, olfactory. Olfactory allows for sense. What sense is this? Our sense of smell. So you can see here that our sense of smell, being able to bring odorants in, and what it will do is go up to the very top of your nose, further than your finger can reach, and it hits some olfactory nerves that are pushing through a bony plate at the top. These olfactory nerves will pick up these chemicals or odorants and send it to the brain to give you a sense of smell. Now the types of smells that you would use to test this are very light florally smells. So musks, florals, ketones, coffees, things like this you will not test somebody with very strong odorants or noxious compounds because, so if ammonia was used for example, this could trigger the trigeminal nerve and you can see here the trigeminal nerve is number five, it could trigger the trigeminal nerve and give a false reading. So these light florals, coffees, ketones, these are the types of smells that are used. Now just having the sense of smell is an indication of the olfactory nerve if somebody smells it and they say it's a different smell than what they've actually been given, then that could be a problem at the brain itself, so a processing issue. All right, so the next one is optic. Optic is sense as well, and this is simply our ability to see. Now you can test optic a couple of different ways. You can have a look at the four fields of view, so see if they can see on those four fields, or it could be acuity, and so this could be that 2020 test where somebody stands away from a chart, covers an eye and see if they can read those letters, or it could be a pupillary reflex test where cover an eye, get a light, shine it onto the pupil, and when the light goes onto the pupil, the pupil should constrict because it doesn't want to let so much light in. Now this is also using cranial nerve three, which is the ocular motor, because the motor portion of ocular motor is that which constricts that pupil. So optic will sense the light, ocular motor will constrict in response to the light. That then moves us over to ocular motor. Now, there are three important nerves, cranial nerves, that are involved in eye movement. So that's gonna be the ocular motor, the trochlea, and the abducens. So that's three, four, and six. So let's talk about them separately and then a test that we can use to look at all of them. So ocular motor, like I said, is the pupillary reflex and can constrict the pupil in response to light. What ocular motor also does is allows us to look upwards. Now when you look upwards, your eyelids also go up as well. So ocular motor controls eyelid elevation and eye moving upwards, also controls eye moving downwards and also controls our ability to go cross-eyed, so inwards. So we've got eye and eyelid going up, eye going down, eye moving inwards, and pupillary constriction. This is all ocular motor. So if the ocular motor wasn't working, what could happen? Well, the pupil would, uh, sorry, the eyelid would droop. That's one, that's called ptosis. So drooping of that eyelid. Or because the muscles that ocular motor innervate bring the eye up, down, and in, which way doesn't it? Well, it doesn't bring it out or laterally, so the eye can go out and downwards. And this could be a sign of ocular motor palsy. If we look at trochlea, trochlea means pulley, and this innervates a muscle that pulls the eye down and inwards, and if this muscle wasn't working or the innervation or the trochlear nerve wasn't working, you, what usually happens is the individual tilts their head to compensate for the loss of that particular nerve function, right? Tilting of the head. And then if we look at abducens, abducens means to abduct. When you abduct something, you take it away, right? So I'm abducting my arm, 
abducting my eye means to go laterally, means to go outwards. And you can see here, moving the eye laterally. So if the abducens muscle wasn't working, then the eye would go in and down as well. Now, how do you test all three of these with that H movement? So the finger up in the top right field of view, down, get them to follow the finger, in, and there we go testing all three of those particular nerves. Now, the one that we missed here was number five, which is trigeminal. Now, trigeminal is both sensory and motor. If we first look at the sensory for trigeminal, it's gonna be, if you use your fingers like this, tri meaning three. So you're gonna have a sensory nerve here, sensory nerve here, sensory nerve here. You've got the ophthalmic, you've got the maxillary, you've got the mandibular, and it gives you your various sensations coming from these areas of the face. So sensation of the trigeminal, these particular areas of the face, so simply by feeling these areas can give you an indication of whether the trigeminal sensory component is working, or touching of the eye and do the corneal reflex is also one, but trigeminal is also motor, and what does it do? It allows for us to chew, so if you Tense your jaw up, you should feel the muscles here bulge out. You should feel the muscles up here at the temples bulge out. That's all because of activation of the trigeminal nerve. Or put your hand underneath your jaw and try and open your jaw. Being able to resist that force is trigeminal as well. Now we go down to facial. Facial is also both sensory and motor. So if we look at the motor portion of facial, it's allowing us to have facial expression. Moving my face around like this is facial. What about sensory? Facial gives us our sense of taste for the anterior or front two thirds of the tongue. So tasting just for the front two thirds of the tongue is the facial nerve. If we go down to vestibular cochlea, it's just a sense. And so it allows for vestibular cochlea is hearing and balance. And simply by being able to hear something at very distances, distances and location is testing that vestibular cochlea nerve. What about glossopharyngeal? It's both sensory and motor. Glosso means tongue, pharyngeal means back of throat. All right, so glossopharyngeal for sensory gives us our sense of taste at the posterior one third of the tongue. And for motor is swallowing. It also allows for activation of some of the salivary glands. For example, the parotid means near ear. If that's activated, it allows for us to salivate. Vagus, the vagus nerve, also known as the wandering nerve, is the only one that goes beyond the head and neck and goes down, innervates the heart, innervates the airways, innervates the digestive system. But 80 to 90% of the vagal nerve fibers, you can see that as both sensory and motor, 80 to 90% are just sensory. So it's sending information from these areas back up to the brain to tell us what's happening. Now, one of the ways you can test vagus is the gag reflex because vagus plays a role in swallowing as well. Now, the accessory nerve, the accessory nerve is motor and this allows for us to shrug. So you can put your hands on somebody's shoulders, depress down and get them to elevate their shoulders. That's testing the accessory nerve. And then the hypoglossal is motor. Hypo means under, glossal means tongue. This allows for us to move our tongue around. So this is some ways that you can test the functions of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves.